Hello and welcome to this PCL London Bowel session on intravascular lithotripsy, expanding the boundaries of transfemoral TAVI. My name is Sam Dawkins. I'm an interventional cardiologist based in Oxford in the United Kingdom. I'm joined by Ola de Bacca, a cardiologist at Riggs Hospitalis in Copenhagen, and also by Carlo de Mario, who's a cardiologist at the University Hospital Correggi in Florence. Both are leaders in the field, um, and they've both joined me to talk about intravascular lithotripsy in TAVI. The COVID pandemic has certainly changed the way we do many things, including around TAVI. Uh, in Oxford, our non-femoral TAVI rates have reduced dramatically, uh, partly due to challenges around anesthesia and beds, and particularly because of the availability of adjunctive therapies to handle challenging vascular access. Ola, perhaps we could start with you. Um, how has the proportion of patients undergoing transfemoral TAVI changed in Copenhagen? Well, I would say um, also in the start, we were already rather a transfemoral side because it's all depending on which valve you were using. So in the beginning of our tower program, we were core valve uh, users, and that's actually led us to use mostly transfemoral, also, of course, some transubclavian. But it's true, we have had the same uh, evolution that we went from general anesthesia to local anesthesia to fully percutaneous approach. And nowadays we do more than 90, 95% of our procedures transfemorally. And I would say we were, thanks to uh, IVL therapy, intravascular lithotripsy, we can push these boundaries further and further. So we think there is a lot to win from uh, do, yeah, treating our patients transfemorally. Very good, thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, over to you, Carlo. What are some of the common problems that are associated with uh, transfemoral TAVI? Well, Sam, first of all, remember the new guidelines stated only transfemoral TAV is preferable to surgery in patients with degenerative aortic valve stenosis, but we do have 10 15% of cases, and these are especially present in older patients who are the most likely to benefit from TAV over surgery, where transfemoral TAV is precluded by the stent of peripheral calcification. So the miniaturization of the current TAVI delivery system makes failure due to insufficient diameter at the insertion point quite rare. But the issue most of the times lies in the external or common iliac artery. Severity of calcification is as important as tortuosity. Of course, when you have a circumferential calcium around the lumen of four millimeter, you are almost certain that you will need uh, uh, the te new technology of lithotripsy to go through with your delivery system, but don't underestimate longish calcified segments that are maybe six, seven, even eight millimeter in diameter, maybe not circumferential, maybe even less than 270, uh, just protruding nodules that when there are extreme tortuosity may raise uh, unsurmountable problems without lithotripsy. So it's not just about vessel caliber, which is the number we all look at, it's about tortuosity and degree of calcification. Um, Ola, for people, many of our viewers may not have used intravascular lithotripsy before um, and may not, not be aware of some of the advantages in, in challenging femoral TAVI. Um, would you mind just talking us through uh, some, of, some of those advantages? Well, the, the main advantage is, of course, when you have a, a, a patient with a very calcified peripheral axis, um, you're very concerned that there might uh, happen a vascular rupture or a spiral dissection or any other vascular complication. So what IVL really does, or intravascular lip lithotripsy, it generates a sonic pressure wave. And these sonic pressure waves are, are uh, generated by lithotripsy emitters, which are integrated in a PTA balloon. And these waves are able to modify both the superficial and the deep vascular calcium, thereby changing the vessel, vascular compliance or the vessel compliance and allowing for controlled luminal expansion. So you make some kind of micro cracks into the vessel wall that makes the vessel more compliant. And then you also are, are you, you, you can expand the vessel without the penalty of a, a nasty vascular complication. That's why we can treat even patients up to with a very severely calcified lesion, uh, even circumferentially with intraluminal diameters as low as three, four millimeters. There seems to be, I, I think it's quite region specific whether interventional cardiologists uh, tackle peripheral vascular intervention. And uh, just from a purely practical standpoint, uh, how do you actually use this technology? I mean, we're most TAVI operators are also coronary operators. How does this compare to 
uh, PCI of a mid-vessel lesion? I would say, as, as Carlo already mentioned correctly, typically most severe calcifications are in the in the common iliac or in the external iliac. So you uh, you typically make your puncture uh, at your puncture site as normal. You you do your pre closure and then you just bring in a coronary wire or zero zero fourteen wire, and on that wire you can bring in your um, your IVL uh, balloon, and then you 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 bring your you apply your uh, intravascular lithotripsy. Um, afterwards, you can then bring in your introducer sheet for your TAVI and you can continue to your TAVI. So it's very simple, very easy approach. There's nothing uh, difficult uh, on, on performing such a procedure. If I may echo your uh, points, uh, Oli, uh, I also think that it's a standard puncture, first of all, femoral puncture, the way we normally do. And uh, that's helpful also for other um, modalities of treatment like use of impella, use of ECMO, the arterial cannula of ECMO. If you don't have access to this technology, if you are unable to use it, I don't see you are a complete, uh, even coronary interventionalist. So please uh, uh, add this to your armamentarium. That's very helpful. Thank you. Thank you both for that. Um, Thinking about how you now use um, IVL in your day-to-day -day workflow, a question for you, Carlo. Do you, do you select patients who are going to need IVL up front, or do sometimes you change your plans on the table? How, how does it work in your centre? No, I think it's a very good question, uh, Sam. I think around two thirds of cases, uh, you know from the start, again, because of the, the uh, lumen diameter is too small because it's a, a concentric calcium, is a long uh, disease segment, is extremely tortuous. But there is, uh, you should be open to the rest of this uh, third of cases when uh, the moment you see that uh, your 14 French cook sheets uh, when you are using an Evolut Metronic, that's uh, our standard start of the case, uh, or the e sheets from Edwards, if you are using a balloon expandable valve, they don't go up and they have difficulties, be ready to switch. And uh, uh, that's quite easy, having your machine charged, your, your uh, console charged, and a six to eight millimeter uh, um, lithotripsy balloon available. Now you have also eight uh, millimeter uh, balloons that can deliver in half time the same 300 pulses, and that this is an extremely efficient technology. Now, you've both uh, had publications in the field uh, very recently. Um, starting with you, Ala, would you perhaps uh, tell me something about what you did and what the key findings were? Well, we reported about our early experience with uh, IVL-assisted transfemoral TAVI, and we had 50 patients uh, with IVL-assisted transfemoral TAVI in Copenhagen over the last three years we, we treated. Maybe interesting to say is that I would say 35 of these 50 patients would have never been treated uh, transfemorally if we would not have had the technology of IVL. Uh, 15 of them were kind of borderline cases, which we would have maybe still pushed transfemorally, um, but of course then with a higher risk of complications. So that's maybe interesting to know. What did it show? Well, it showed actually that the, the, the technology and the, the, the approach is very safe. Uh, we had also very uh, successful, 100% successful delivery of the, the, the TAVI devices. So that's very, uh, very nice. We had only in one out of 50, and uh, still a vascular complication at one of the IVL treated lesions, but that was uh, easily catched up percutaneously. And of course you have to know these are very, very diseased patients. They have severe peripheral vascular disease. And that also makes that they have not typically only vascular disease, on, on the common or external iliac, but sometimes they have also more calcifications or they're more diseased at the, even at the puncture site. Still, that does not withhold us in Copenhagen to do these cases by fully percutaneous transfemoral approach. What we then do is that we always have kind of a safety wire, either contra or ipsilateral, so we can catch up complications at the puncture site. This is unrelated to the IVL uh, therapy but you have to know you're working into much more diseased patients with peripheral vascular disease. So vascular closure device failure is also more often as we showed. We had that in 10 to 15% of our patients. But then I would say that's not a problem. We are just prepared. 
with balloons, with covered stands to catch up these puncture site problems. And we show that we have zero major vascular complications if we look to VARC2 defined uh, major vascular complication definitions. Yeah, there's some pretty impressive results there. And it illustrates also the, the, uh, the way we all try to think in these procedures of being, uh, being two steps ahead. Um, I like the idea of a, of a safety wire in these complex femoral cases. Yeah. Yeah. Um, same question to you, Carlo. Um, it, from your uh, recent publication, uh, tell us uh, some of the key findings that you came to. Well, we added uh, to the cases of Copenhagen, uh, the cases we perform in Florence and in the few other uh, high volume uh, Italian and uh, French centers. And uh, uh, we basically had similar findings in terms of uh, complete success and a very limited number of complications. I think what is most impressive in that uh, the increase in number of uh, lithotripsy cases mirrors the reduction of the non-transfemoral cases that were performed in the various centers. And uh, again, you can reach a sort of uh, minimum of three, four percent in, in the most recent experience, which I think is pretty remarkable. Yeah, I think, I mean, really striking to have uh, in others' cohort that number of patients who would never even be considered for transfemoral TAVI, TAVI without this technology. Um, and uh, I mean, why, why nowadays, still, still for you, um, Carlo, why are we moving away from alternate access TAVI? What, what are the downsides? Should we be doing very difficult femoral or is it easier to do slightly less difficult axillary, for example? Well, I mean, I, I think it's not just a matter of being in the guidelines. The guidelines are such because, unfortunately, known uh, transfemoral approaches are also uh, prone to higher uh, number of complications. They are um, uh, surgical approaches that may require uh, general anesthesia, even a trans subclavian in our hands most of the times is done uh, with general, under general anesthesia, and that's not ideally in an elderly patient. Uh, they are approaches not done very often, and that also doesn't help. Uh, if you have extremely complex uh, um, transcaval procedures and you do once a year, <laughs> that's of course, uh, I, I'm happy to refer to a single center in, in Italy or in France, but uh, that's probably not ideal. And I confess, I see uh, very rarely the need. And of course, transapical is now totally uh, disappeared and has been right. That is a, a, a rather rudimentary approach of the very beginning of TAVI now is gone. Yeah, I think, I mean, I would personally take challenging femoral over, over any other alternate access uh, with the tools that we have available now. No. Swallow, would you mind just summarizing some of the things we've discussed now? and particularly uh, some of the thoughts you have around adopting IVL in day-to-day -day practice. Well, I think the conclusion is indeed that uh, what we discussed just right now, I think it's better to, to push your boundaries transfemorally. There are so many advantages in this. Um, there are, we know that alternative access likes transubclavian, transaxillary, also transcable, they are going uh, together uh, with, with higher complication rates. Uh, also, the, all these TAVI devices, they have been designed for transfemoral root or transfemoral approach. There is a more practical cut lab setup, which you can hold when you work uh, transfemorally. Also, not un unimportantly, we as an operator, we stand there every day uh, performing these cases. We have less radiation when we do transfemoral than a complex trans subclavian or trans auxiliary or trans carotid case. So also that I have to think of. So I would say in, in, in as a final conclusion, performing your TAVI procedure by percutaneous transfemoral approach and this facilitated also by IVL for these additional 5% of cases, that's the best guarantee for low complication rates at your uh, TAVI program and also early ambulation of your patients. Excellent. Well, that's a, a good point to end. Thank you both very much for joining me and thank you to all of our audience for joining this session on IVL and TAVI. Thank you very much.